Hello and welcome to this CBT Nuggets micro nugget entitled NIC Teaming in Windows Server 2012. Network Interface Card or NIC Teaming is a brand new feature in Windows Server 2012. Now, the concept of NIC Teaming, also called NIC Bonding, also called Load Balancing and Failover or LBFO, isn't a new technology of course. It's been available via third parties in previous versions of Windows Server. However, Microsoft includes this capability in the Windows Server 2012 software itself and I'm going to show you, we're going to dive right in and I'll show you how to set it up. From Windows Server 2012 we'll open the Server Manager utility and if we navigate to Local Server we'll see any network interface cards that are installed, physical network interface cards on the box. You can team up to 32 NICs. You need at least two NICs to form a team of course, but you can go up to 32 and the reason you'd want to aggregate NICs into a team is for one of two primary reasons. One for performance. You could combine two 1 gigabit per second pipes for a combined throughput of 2 gigs per second or alternatively we can set standby adapters to handle failover if one of your NICs or a switch attached to a NIC happen to go offline. Now then, you'll notice that on my server I have two LAN interfaces to which I've bound static IPv4 addresses. To start a NIC team, we have the NIC teaming section here. We can switch this from disabled to enabled. This opens the NIC teaming dialog box. Want to draw your attention, let me increase the size of this dialog. The first thing we want to do is down under adapters and interfaces, we want to bring together any relevant interfaces. So we can click LAN 1, hold down shift, select the other LAN interface. If you have more than one and you want to incorporate non-contiguous LAN interfaces, of course we can control click. And then from the tasks drop down, add to new team. We give the team a name, I'll just call it Nick Team. We verify which interfaces will be in that team, and then we can specify additional properties by opening up this disclosure. The teaming mode is either switch independent or switch dependent. Bottom line here is whether the logic for determining traffic going out of different team members is handled by the switch or by the Windows software. Static teaming is going to require some switch configuration so the switch ports know that these interfaces are part of a team. Switch independent gives you most flexibility and there's also LACP which is a variant of switch independent teaming. I'm going to choose switch independent here. For load balancing, address hash is the default. You can also build NIC teams for virtual interfaces with Hyper-V. In that case, you could select Hyper-V port, but address hash is the default. And basically what happens is all of your packets traveling through your team members are hashed such that Windows knows that data conversation A that might be going out LAN 1 belongs on LAN 1 and not LAN 2. You see, it's a way for Windows to keep traffic straight among your NIC team members. If you're going to do standby, you can specify that from the standby adop adapter property. By default, all adapters are active and you're bonding the data bandwidth. Let's click OK and we now see that under teams we have a new NIC team, its status is OK, we're online, and if we come out of here back to server manager, let me manually refresh the view, we'll see that NIC teaming is now enabled. We can always come back to our configuration by clicking that enabled option. And for the NIC team I created, notice that we've gone to DHCP configuration. Now what's that all about? If we click this link, it'll open network connections, and you have to supply a virtual IP address for the team object. It shows up as Microsoft Network Adapter Multiplexer Driver. So let's right click and select Properties and we can set an IPv4 virtual address just like we can for individual NICs. I'm going to set a VIP of 10.0.0.3 for the NIC team. Click OK and now this server has, well again let me refresh the view, this server is now present to the LAN under this IP address and no other box, no user needs to know or care that this server has a NIC team enabled. Before I end this micro nugget, I just showed you how to set up a NIC team using the graphical tools. If you're a PowerShell fan, and you should be if you're going to certify on Windows Server 2012 at the least, you'll want to know the LBFO commandlets. As you see, I've opened up an administrative PowerShell prompt and I've run get command, 
with the noun parameter to bring in all commandlets that include the string LBFO in the noun. And this is a nice shorthand way of presenting all of the Nick teaming commandlets to us. And you see that the verb syntax here is consistent with any other PowerShell commandlet. Add, get, new, remove, rename, and set. So there you have it. You should always check out TechNet for additional resources on Nick teaming. And I hope you learned a lot in this micro nugget. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.